Back home, we are running like rabbits to, to catch up with everything. And uh, I, I would love to switch jobs with one of these guys, but <laughs> I, I'm sure they don't want mine, so. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, we have a lot to learn. If you meet me at the reception, you meet the waiter, you meet everybody else, everybody is like smiling. We say this is a, a company making smiles. When you run a value-based company, an open system, and when you make your employees more of your partners than employees, then you get this smiling culture that cuts across the company. That red smile comes from inside, you know, the love of, of our people, of the nature mm. we are, and then I mean like the life is good and like, everything's fine. Everybody in Beskam smile from gate to the restaurant, everybody's smiling. I sometimes call this coming home. It's just this feeling that I belong here. So, so 20 years ago, I had the privilege of sitting around the fireplace here in the Mara, and suddenly this old Maasai chief called Ule Taik, in his mid 80s, bumped him. And he sat down, his son was translating, and we sat through the whole night talking about all these issues, about poverty, no jobs for the Maasai youth, environment degradation, wildlife disappearing, young Maasai moving into the slum in Nairobi. Actually quite a bleak story. So in the morning when the sun rose, we had agreed, let's see if we can come up with something. So together we could, we could um, contribute to preserving this ecosystem. So we were suddenly brothers in, in arms, or brothers in spears. The land was belonged to dad. It's a relationship between my father and Swain, that's back in 1998, when the old man passed away and handed over the land to me. I started taking over a relationship between myself or my family with Swain. By partnering with the Maasai community as the central partner, the building block, to build a concept that could secure this nature for the future generations. Now, this land here was privatized some seven years ago. That means everybody who wants can fence it. That's the end of the wildlife, who needs a continuous um, land area. Some very visionary Maasai leaders and tourist partners, it's actually many of us, agreed to a model where actually the Maasai invest their land in wildlife conservation. It's, it's, it's actually, I think, it's a very beautiful story. I mean, you got suddenly a land plot and you choose voluntarily to invest it for wildlife conservation. The Maasai community, we spearheaded this one to, to, you know, to be successful. When you travel with us, you're choosing to carefully leave a positive footprint for the future. You know you are conserving more than uh, 20,000 uh, acres, 55,000 hectares that are all fully under conservation. Land which otherwise today, if it was not for base camp and like-minded partners, would actually be fully demarcated, would actually be fully settled, cultivated, or even sold to people who don't care about the environment. Africa is losing its wildlife to a shocking degree. Mara ecosystem, it's about a quarter of Kenya total wildlife in this little area and even more when you look at the number of lions. So the effort here is extremely important and is very, very urgent. Welcome to Nabuisho Conservancy. The increase of animals at the conservation is higher compared to the National Reserve and it's because of the controlled zoning, the controlled grazing that is happening there because there's a very peaceful way of um, interaction between the, the wild game and the, the cattle. Now in 10 years time, we can see lion 
and we can get a little bit much much closer to them but the good thing which i still appreciate is there is still a little bit of communication between you uh, or the team the guide who is driving that particular car and that particular line is in there is a stealing of glances they they looking at you but they are relaxed so that gives you a feeling that yes you've changed that animal uh, to create more trust with with you but at the same time it's, it's still a wild animal yeah we need to identify ourselves into this web of life rather than just saying this is for me to exploit and use we take you on a journey combining the rustic of Masai Mara and the privacy and exclusivity of Mara Nabosho. We have three permanent camps in Base Camp Explorer Kenya, plus one mobile camping safari, where we take guests out on a Mara walking trail safari. If you come to Base Camp, the big invitation is true Maasai eyes, the true specialist. The eyes, they're really used to, all the time, you keep like looking around mm. and um, the, the, the sharp light, the sharp uh, sunshine from you know from the sun, really like the eyes really adapt yeah. in that. So when they adapt in that uh, kind of like uh, environment, you keep like um, focus and uh, good eyes all the time. That guy saw that lion. He's guiding a group. I'm with the binoculars, <laughs> and you see him before me, huh? Yeah. That's that's that feeling. Yeah. True specialist, true Maasai eyes. Yeah, exactly. As a Maasai, when you're walking in the savannah here, that's nothing. It's just like walking in the streets of Nairobi, someone who has been brought up in Nairobi. When they go out on a walking safari, it's a unique experience in itself. It's coming close to nature, very much in contact to self. Yeah. I felt so safe, I was hoping we were going to see a lion. What is very paramount when doing a walking safari is safety. You put the people into the level of knowing that you're walking in wildlife area. I think we're now up to about 100,000 trees over the last 20 years. You're actually consciously deciding to plant a tree to offset your carbon that you've been uh, running through when you're coming here. We need to have a forest. We need to be quicker. The vision is to plant 500,000 trees in five years. Base Camp has believed in the capacity that is coming from the local community first and the local talent that we have in Kenya. So that also explains the success. It's needed to be profitable, otherwise you are donor dependent. This is not a free lunch. This is actually a business model at its core. You have to run a responsible tourism that is profitable because otherwise you're not delivering a product that people are willing to pay for. Tourism has been seen as a sector where you create a lot of local benefits. Basecamp Explorer is a Norwegian investor uh, who has been starting that up and where we have provided uh, funding for expansion. The good thing about them is that they are both financially sound, they are working well, but it also that they are working with the Maasai, so the revenues from their operation mm -hmm. is shared also a large part with the owners of the land. What Basecamp Explorer have managed to set up in Kenya is impressive and we are so proud that uh, Basecamp Explorer is one of our members and that Svein is a part of the NABA board. One of the few companies in the Mara that are actually run by locals, locally trained, uh, locally schooled, uh, right from the top to the bottom. I have that feeling that Basecamp is aware about the challenges that are facing people at the community. Basecamp is just like a mother of local community. You know, they don't look whether you are learned or whether you have education, but the best thing with Basecamp, they train you with the skills and employ you. They need your effort, and if you are willing to work with them, so if you are ready, welcome, and you work with them. I love the way they do with our people. I love the way they empower the youth. Those maybe were not able to go to school like me because I, I, I'm a class 8 uh, dropout, didn't go to, to that higher. But actually, this can they consider anyone from the community from down up. People here are just like one family. And it's like everyone treats each other the same. We're trying to, to give priority to the ladies, so we have also ladies. Yeah. What a man can do, a lady can do. 
there's a lady by the name Agnes working in Pesca. And if you get her or request her to be your guide, you will be like, wow, I'm having a lady Maasai guide. We are at uh, the ladies workshop called Pesca Maasai brand ladies workshop. Uh, 138 Maasai women who are doing the beadwork. Without any background, except their traditional handicraft, now lifted to a high quality product line. And that is vocational training. It has made me a role model to many ladies because uh, women here did not think that women can be managers, especially in our culture. They thought women are just at home, taking care of the children, not by getting any jobs. So when I came in, it transformed myself. This project has impacted the ladies socially, economically. We've really seen a revolution in Talek area. Dorobo has been with us for the last 20 years. When Basecam started operating in the Mara, he saw this company that he could work for and get the flexibility in thinking, get the, the environment that he could be valued. Uh, just uh, remembering that he's never had a formal education, spending his life hunting in the forest. He can't fluently communicate in, in English or Swahili, but he got this company that could value him that way and give him the chance to make the guest smile. We still need to push the community where they want to be. We don't want to lose the relationship between us and the community. So if, if we keep ourselves the way we are now, and then we need to aim more development than what we have now. When you travel with us and you visit Nabosho, which is one of the best models of conservants we have in the region, you consciously choosing to support one of the more than 500 families that are fully supported by the operators, the tourism operators that are in the conservancy. When you meet the cost of your travel, the cost of your safari, Basecam and the other partners consciously pay part of that amount to the communities. And by this you guarantee someone a fixed income every month that is quite decent, that can be found in, in the main cities that you have here in the country. You consciously deciding to pay someone's education, one of the 500 landowners. It's helping the community by creating income to the community. It's helping the environment which the wild animals are there. So wild animals are getting homes. So creating habitats and creating income to the community, it's, a, it's also a way of creating relationship. This is an impact not to one family. This is an impact with the whole community. I believe tomorrow there is a future. When we have a number of guides in the community, they help us to be ambassadors of nature, transforming more lives, changing other people's lives. You're lifting people out of poverty. That's too good, just by enjoying. But we want to deliver something that transforms the guests, the understanding of the world, and hopefully the understanding of uh, themselves.